Over the course of, you know, computing, the computing industry, we had various waves of how we interact with our computers. So, uh, character-based input. I'm sure lots of people still use character-based input. We've had uh, graphical user interfaces, Mac and Windows. We've had, or we're in, I would say, you know, debatably, the, the kind of last leg of the mobile era. And we're moving into the kind of spatial, immersive 3D wave. So at Microsoft, we call that mixed reality. So let's talk about what that is for a minute. Imagine, and come with me for a second, imagine you've got a dial which goes from physical reality all the way up to virtual reality. All right, and every step in between. So um, dial up one notch, you can start to do things like, um, you know, this is a real setting, obviously. There's a real lady, a real table. We bring in some holograms, so a hologram of a dog, an application, those kinds of things. We're mixing them in with the real world. Take it up another notch and we can start to do more interesting things like bring somebody in from a remote location or go into their experience. Now, I'm gonna take it all the way out to virtual, virtual, full virtuality now. We're gonna replace the whole scenario. And, you know, I think we've all got used to this now. We can go into new worlds, right? It's only bounded by the imagination of the designers of those apps. And then uh, take it back a notch, and you can do interesting stuff like show the, the real walls so you don't crash into them. Or more interestingly, you can bring your real hands into the, into the experience. And maybe you can interact with digital things with your real hands. Now, we haven't seen so much of that, but I think uh, some of those experiences might be coming down to us. So... Um, what does that look like? What does that look like now? So at Microsoft, we call this a mixed reality spectrum. So there was a paper back in the early 90s uh, which sought to classify display devices at the time. And um, it came up with this term, mixed reality spectrum. And you can kind of place things on there. So you can place ARs on this side, you know, very much near the physical end of the world, uh, Pokemon Go, just overlays, that kind of thing. And then as we move towards the centre, you know, things start to interact with the environment. So Maybe I've got, a, I've got a digital ball and I can throw it on that table, it bounces across the table and be occluded as it falls off the other side. And then right at the other end, you know, VR. So let's start by thinking, on this side we've got a HoloLens device. Who here has tried a HoloLens? Uh, not that many. We see quite a lot these days, but um, not that many here. So we're going to talk about that in a minute. Actually, we'll talk about that now. So it's a full Windows 10 computer that you wear on your head. And uh, you, don't, you don't need any, that sounds weird when you say it like that, but you don't need any um, you know, external sensors or anything like that. It does all the tracking from on board. So it's got uh, a kind of connect style depth sensor in, in the front at the top. And then it's got four environment sensing cameras on each side, which uh, feed data into the SLAM algorithms on board, which enable the device to understand where it is in the world. So if I place a hologram here, you know, the device has to know where it is in order to be able to keep that hologram there, right? And uh, you'd be surprised by the level of tracking. The, the tracking on the device is superb. I'll show you, uh, I'll show you a feed off from it in a minute. So other sensors, so it's got a webcam in the front which powers the Skype experience. Somebody calls you on Skype, they can see into your world and they can draw into your world in 3D, which is quite an interesting scenario. Uh, let's talk about the lenses for a minute. You can't go and buy these from Tesco's. They're uh, custom built waveguides. So, uh, you know, with all these experiences, you're dealing with like stereoscopic images. What fools the brain into thinking you're seeing stuff in 3D? So, HoloLens is no different. It's got two, um, two HD projectors, one for each eye. And uh, it beams light down to the waveguide, which bounces around inside the waveguide like a fiber optic cable. And then when the light gets to the level of your pupil, it's gated out onto your retina. So there's no, there's no screen in that process. Right, you can imagine trying to get light from, you've got to get light from somewhere down to the eye, right? It's a bit of a physics problem, really. Some people solve it by having a mirror sticking out here. This does it by passing the light through the waveguide. Now, um, I hope, you know, as I go through, you start to get a sense of this kind of engineering effort that's gone into this device. It's quite phenomenal. So, um, you know, if you're mixing holograms of the real world, you've got a sub 20 millisecond time frame latency. Uh, otherwise, you're going to break the immersion. So from the motion of your head to the photons hitting the back of your eye, sub 20 milliseconds. How do you do that on a mobile device? 
you know, without it getting hot and burning your head. Well, the way the HoloLens does it, it has a um, holographic processing unit, and that crunches down the data from all the sensors that are coming in, crunches down into form the CPU and the GPU can easily deal with. And that's the way, that's the way it works. Uh, last but not least, spatial sound. You know, when you're building these kinds of apps, you know, the user sees what's in front of them, but if you want them to maybe look behind them, you can do things like have a lion roar behind and uh, divert the attention. So in true mixed reality form, the, uh, the speakers don't block out your hearing. They just mix the spatial sound experience with the real world. Okay, so let's plug one in and see if we can get this demo to work. So what I can do with this app is I can take the, uh, I can take the feed coming off the webcam, composited with the holograms, and we can show it up there on the screen. So what you're seeing now is you're seeing yourselves. <laughs> Say hello. But what you're also seeing there is you're seeing um, the, home, the home screen. Now, Dan, if you could, uh, there's a couple of gestures on the device. So the depth sensor detects gestures that you do in front of the depth sensor. So if you could do what's what we call the bloom. So you hold your fingers together. Oh, you know already. Uh, you're, you're a professional. So when Dan does that, you'll notice the, uh, the home menu either disappears or comes back. It's like pressing the home button on your mobile. So if you could gaze, so as he moves his head, you notice the little white dot there. He's moving the cursor around. So if you could rest that on the holograms app, uh, which is the, the kind of pink one at the top. Yeah, that's, that'll be the one. That'll be the one. Now, if you could uh, execute the air tap, Oh, he, he does know. Okay, so what, what happens now is that, um, that that's a 2D app, and if you kind of walk around, that it will follow you. And you, it will try to find a place on the wall or somewhere suitable for it to be pinned. So if you air tap somewhere, maybe on the wall, then uh, that will now pin this app into place. And uh, we'll, see, we'll see a catalogue of holograms appear that we can choose from. When, when you choose one of them, it will pop out into 3D. So if you could uh, choose the spaceman, Dan, and uh, so gaze at it and then just air tap, he should just pop out into 3D. There he is. And uh, if you wouldn't mind um, just walking along there. I'm hoping the Wi-Fi holds up, by the way, but we'll see. And could you place the spaceman kind of about halfway along there, maybe down on the floor somewhere? Yeah, and as you're walking around, he sort of bounces off the floor and the walls. Uh, obviously, the device understands its surroundings. So if you could place him down there somewhere. If you, so just do an air tap on him to place him. And then if you choose the adjust menu, make him a little bit bigger. So tap on adjust. Uh, you get a bounding box. You can, uh, you can scale him up. You, you, know, you can make him as big as you want. Not, not too big, but... <laughs> so if you tap, drag, and then let go on the, uh, on the corner... <laughs> Oh, uh, I, th I think the Wi-Fi is struggling a little bit as we, as we do that. Okay, so if you could just tap on the Done button at the bottom of the menu. That's it. Now, now really, there's, there's a point here that I'm trying to make. So, Dan, if you wouldn't mind walking back over here a little bit. And if you could uh, kind of just shuffle over here so, and look at the spaceman. So, so notice... notice um, how the spaceman is occluded by the audience there. <laughs> I th thanks, thanks, Dan. Yeah, th thank you very much. So hopefully that just gives you a little bit of a flavour of what it does. I mean, what I should say is that that is not the experience you get on the device. That drops the device down to like uh, 30 frames a second. You get a much better experience on the device and the, the tracking is rock solid. You need to try it. Okay, so um, we run a program in, in the UK with uh, people who have been developing apps, right? digital agencies, that kind of thing. And uh, so we, we sort of endorse, we have a program where we endorse them. And uh, we've, we've got some digital agencies signed up and they've been building stuff. So I just wanted to show you a quick video of stuff that they've been building to give you an idea of uh, you know, what's possible at the moment. Uh, it's a very short, very short video. You, you'll get an idea it's just, just from watching this. So, the, so this one here, uh, the, the company built an app uh, which is for training surgeons. So it's a shared experience. So multiple people wearing HoloLens can look at this kind of open knee surgery 
And, uh, you know, we're all looking at the same hologram here and it shows how to administer a drug into the knee. And I've done this and I feel like I could do that procedure. <laughs> so, so if there's any other volunteers in, in the audience. Uh, uh, this one's quite interesting. This is all about uh, recreating crime scenes, uh, mapping out the scene, you know, mapping where the dead body is and the, uh, you know, the murder weapons, that kind of thing. So uh, we're just drawing around the dead body, build a mesh around, around that. And this one's pretty cool. This is the Red Bull Air Race. I'd, I'd never seen a Red Bull Air Race before, but these guys are nuts. And uh, so the, the HoloLens app really sort of teaches you the rules of, of the racing. Um, it's great to watch those little planes, you know, flying around the course. Okay, that's it for the video. So going back to the spectrum for a minute, um, we talked about HoloLens. On the other side, so Microsoft open, opened up the mixed reality platform that runs a HoloLens, and OEMs have built immersive headsets. So there's a, quite a few there now, actually. There's an Acer, Samsung, Dell, I can't remember all of them. But they use um, like the, the tracking technology from the HoloLens. So they're basically a VR headset, but you don't have any of the setup. You, know, you don't need to put around um, lighthouse sensors and that kind of thing, because the tracking's done from on board. Of course, you're still tethered to a, to a PC by a cable. And uh, to go along with those, we've got motion controllers, which again are optically tracked, which is quite interesting. Notice the, um, the LED constellation pattern around the top there. Um, so the first, when I saw these, my first question was, how do you do bow and arrow? Because you know, as soon as it, that goes out of the range of the camera, it's no longer optically tracked. Uh, but they, they have IMUs inside them and uh, they're still giving back positional data. And also there's an IK uh, model going on there with your arm, which can only be in a certain number of places, right? Which, I'm informed, works very well. So a little bit about the immersive headsets. So uh, there's the same platform that runs on the HoloLens, which, you know, it's a different experience, right? But uh, a lot of the technology is very similar. So you can build an app which runs across both. Uh, effortless setup, yeah, okay. So there's a single consistent user interface. Now, I'm just going to show you here, and because I, ha I haven't brought an immersive headset with me, but this is basically the same demo that Dan just, just did. So uh, this is when you set up the, an immersive headset. You can see the controllers, and it's just doing a bit of setup there, and you can, obviously you can teleport around and that kind of thing. And um, you can also run the Holograms app that we just saw. So there's the Holograms app, and uh, you know it's it's the same app basically running inside an immersive setting, and there's the spaceman. So uh, if you want to check the compatibility of your PC, there's a there's an app here that's really a consumer app. It's not really designed for developers. The, the spec for developers is a, is a bit higher, but it gives you a guide and um, the spec of versus like a Rift or, or a Vive is lower, it's quite a lot lower. And um, basically what Microsoft have done, they've decided to break into two different sort of PC categories. So there's plain old Windows Mixed Reality. What you can do is you can think about that as running as 60 hertz, right? Which is obviously isn't enough for um, a full interactive 3D experience. But you can do things like uh, 360 videos, that's, that's fine in that, in that scenario. And then uh, the other thing is the ultra thing. And you can look through those specs, it's all online. So. Just a very quick, uh, and th this is a bit marketing-y, but um, this, is, this is a video for the release just showing some of the uh, titles that Microsoft have, have got onto the platform. It's, it's worth a look. You, you'll recognize some of these titles. Um, the, all, all the big names are there. So, um, are most people developers here, by the way? <laughs> you can't answer for everyone else, but it, it, there's in general developers, right? That's the... So, the, the point here is that the mixed reality APIs are built into the platform. They run as part of Windows. If you're not familiar with Windows, we've got, there's a universal Windows platform which is built for modern apps. 
right? So the apps that you get from the store, they're touch friendly, they have security sandbox, all that, all that kind of thing that you get. When you build a HoloLens app, that's the kind of app that you build. And uh, the idea with the universal Windows platform, it runs across everything. Right? So you can build an app which runs, on, you can build an app which runs on that phone, that Surface Book, a Surface Hub, these headsets, Raspberry Pi as well. Interestingly, we just one app, so it's it's quite an interesting idea. In terms of middleware, Unity is the most supported platform, and I think there was a stat a couple of months ago: 90% of apps on a Hololens are built with Unity. Uh, Unreal Engine support is. On its way, it's being worked on. There's um, GitHub repos where you can kind of watch the work going on. You're laughing there, I don't know. <laughs> are, are you involved with that repo at all? Or? No, no, no. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, so it's not quite there yet, so. Um, and of course, you know, all the APIs are built into Windows, so if, if you want to build this stuff into your own custom engine, you can just go ahead and use those APIs and do that. And there's another route if you've got stuff on Steam VR that's also being supported. And uh, we were running a private beta, and that went live yesterday, I think it was. So if you've got one of these headsets, you can get all of your Steam VR content, which is pretty cool. So some things about when you're building these apps, you know, we've sort of learned these things as as we're going forward. Some of the paradigms that we have uh, repeated on the platform, world coordinates. It's quite an interesting one, you know. You can put a hologram down here. I can go on holiday to Spain. I can go shopping at Tesco's, and I can come back here a year later. The hologram's still there, right? Because it has a world coordinate associated with it, which is quite an interesting idea. You know, you can pin holograms around your your room. Uh, my front room has uh, un, you know 100 inch Netflix on the wall. Got my calendar email. In the kitchen, there's you know recipe apps and that kind of thing. Baking on a Sunday. Uh, I think you get the idea. But th and then and then the the platform itself, gaze, gesture, and voice. So it's quite natural to gaze at things that you want to interact with. It sounds a bit weird, but it, it works quite well. It's quite natural. And then when you want to action that, that object, you can either submit a gesture or a voice command. And that stuff works throughout the platform. Uh, you've, seen, you've seen the motion controllers. We mentioned spatial sound and the spatial mapping. Notice that um, that space man was occluded. Um, so the, the, the HoloLens is continually building up it, it, a mesh of its surroundings. So you can use that as a, as a surface in which uh, physics, you can interact with physics. So I can have a rubber ball and bounce it on, across the audience, that kind of thing. It's very easy to do with the toolkit. Developers, if you haven't built an app before, there's a whole load of nice tutorials. They run, you don't even need a HoloLens, they just run on, on the emulators and simulators that we've got. Um, they're all very nicely produced, and they will get you started if you're interested in that. And a few open source projects I'll just quickly mention. Galaxy Explorer was run as um, a competition to find out what people wanted to see being built in public. And this one won it, and it shows a galaxy. So you put a galaxy in your front room and sort of navigate around it. It's quite a cool app. All of the code is up there. There's case studies. It really lays the sort of design process bare. Every kind of step is, is documented. Uh, the toolkit, there's a toolkit on, on top of Unity, which, uh, yeah, I'm sure lots of Unity developers here. It makes things very easy to get started, uh, a lot of complexity under the hood, obviously, but you can get started very easily just by dragging out a few components into your scene. And uh, we've mentioned those. So, yeah, a bit of blurb about those. HoloLens is available now in 39 different countries, which went live uh, very recently. And these headsets, uh, you can get hold of these, 379 with the motion controllers. And uh, that's where all the information is, and that's it. I'm going to be around. If you want to talk about any of that stuff, I'll be here. Just come and grab me. And um, thank you.